أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه ثم السلام على آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم الأجمعين إلى يوم الدين سلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجه رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة صدق الله العظيم سلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنجم وعام مبارك before I go further, please can we pray for Sayyida Hussain, who is in hospital. She used to come to the senior citizens. And my sister-in-law, whose operation actually starts now. Please pray for her. So, I was asked that um, I've forgotten about the memes. I haven't forgotten about them. Just going to do a little bit of a recap, and then we'll go into today's topic. So, a meme, in essence is an idea or a behavior that spreads across cultures through Im imitation and behavior replication. And just as a recap, on the first day we looked at the meme of Muharram. On the second day we looked at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the third day we looked at Ummul Kitab or the mother of the book and we continued on the fourth day when we looked at forgiveness. And I was asking my daughter and I said, can you think of a word starting with meme for forgiveness? And she says, Mama Maaf. I said, okay, so meme for Maaf, okay. The fifth one is friends, which is mates. Sixth one, which we looked at yesterday, was mom and dad. But we focused more on the mom because here we are moms. Now, yesterday I had 63 WhatsApp messages. Okay. Normally it's between 30 and 40. I apologize to those of you who I haven't replied. I will, inshallah, get around to it after the day of Ashura. But I need to reply for this one. Now, th this is normally something that I say in, um, in weddings. So the majority of those that were sent yesterday was, what about mother-in-laws? Now, I'm one of them, so I'm going to talk to myself here, not to you. Okay? And they said, mother-in-laws, you just can't please them. And I looked at myself first. Okay, I'm looking here. First of all, there are no rights of a mother-in-law, father-in-law. I repeat, there are no rights. Her right is on her son, yes, or on her daughter. But she has no rights. I'm going to talk about myself, not you. I am a mother-in-law. I have two son-in-laws and one daughter-in-law. I would disown my son if he would say anything to her negatively in front of me. I repeat again, I would disown him because he has no right to do that. In the African culture, when a person gets married, the mother of the groom gives the mother of the bride a bucket of milk. Do you know why? Because she says, thank you for nurturing this girl, raising her, and sending her to my house. A mother-in-law, and I'm one of them, like I said, I'm talking to myself, not you. And I wrote this down. If you want to look at Sayyid Sistani's Risala, 2432. Two. Remember that? Yeah, that says, a man cannot compel his wife to do housework. If he cannot compel his wife, where can Asasu say, do this and do that? 
A mother-in-law does not have rights. If she does anything for you, it is out of her humanity. And you have to say, please, if you don't mind, could you bring me a cup of tea? Thank you so much. May Allah bless you. Oh, you're looking at me like I've gone nuts. <laughs> the very fact that she has made your son happy is the greatest blessing in life, is it not? And she's given you grandchildren. What more do you want? You cannot tell her what to do. This is the culture that came from the Indian subcontinent. I know my elders will tell me to chokri une bagarati nati. It is their right. Now, now, just have a provisor here. That doesn't mean you start opposing them. No, 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 no. You treat them with respect because they're still your elders. They are still his or her mom and dad. So there's a level of respect. But it doesn't mean, and some of the WhatsApp messages I got, I could cry. I really could cry. She's not allowed to do certain things. She's not allowed to go shopping. She's not allowed to buy things. Um, and I thought, how does she do it? I mean, I've got to learn this from these mother-in-laws, OK? I wouldn't even know where to start. How do you do that? But remember, if we do this to our daughter-in-laws, then we're doing zulm. Zulm is, is injustice, and we're accountable for it. So it's really important that we search within ourselves and see how am I treating somebody else's daughter. I mean, if I raised my daughter with all the love in the world, I raised her with lots of love, and then at the age of 21 or 22 or 30 or whatever the age is, there's no age, I actually gave her to somebody else, and then she has the right to abuse my daughter? La. No. That's not Islam. That's not us as Muslims, okay? If we look at the life of the women of Karbala, we will see how they were treated and what happened. Incidentally, she has a right to her own accommodation. You can't afford it, that's something different. But if she comes and lives with you, it's the greatest honor that she would do for you. So just a little bit of a proviso. I know this is going to cause more questions, and now I'll get them in Gujarati. But Feel free. Can we have a salawat, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil faraj. So what we were talking about was the Prophet being uswatun hasana and us being able to reach a level of success. And success is jannah in the earth, jannah in the akhirah, and protection from the fire, contentment. And I said the first way, because you need measurement. You need to know, how do I know I'm there? So the first measurement was, how do I relate to my parents, dead or alive? How do I react with them? How do I interact with them? What do I do? Do I hold myself? All those things. The second one is, how do I manage the signs of Allah? Quran in Surah Al-Had says, وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهُ تَقْوَى الْكُلُوْ Now the first one I'm going to look at is what I call Q calendar. Or I call it Quranic calendar. You can call it what you like. Now you can look at these ayat of the Quran later. Surah Al Imran. Allah says, "Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa khsila fi layli wa nhar li ayat li uli al bab." If you see the the creation of the heavens of the and the earth and the rotation of the day and night, in there there is a sign for people who reflect. In Surah Al Tawbah, He says, "Inna idda al shahur in the Allah ithna ashar." The months with Allah are twelve months. Shahran fi kitab Allah. They're mentioned in the book of Allah, and He says, "Yawma khalq al samawati wal ard min ha arba'at hurum." Four of them are sacred. What are these months? The Qada, the Hijja, Muharram, and then Rajab. So we've got to understand. I'm going to take you through a little bit of like history, a little bit of understanding what it's about. See, there are sacred places and there are sacred times. The way you and I feel when we sit on the farsh of Hussein is very different from when we're going shopping. Try going to one of the supermarkets and then try and sit here. There's a different feeling. There's something here that you can't put your finger on. You know, we have a Saturday, we have workshop, and for many, many years we've been told, please move to a school, go here. I won't go. As far as I'm alive, I sort of convinced my teachers, we're not going. Because there is an effect that this place has on the children. There's an amazing effect. Now, I know Madrasa has lots of students, and so they don't have a choice, and we restrict our students. But this place is something else just something else. And whether it's going to be Harefield or whether it's going to be Stanmore, it is still something that has a feeling of the 
Ahlul Bayt. So these are special places. Now there are special times as well. Now why did Allah base my and your division of time on the solar system? So that we would be in touch with the nature, with the nature that he has created. How did we get to January to December? What happened? Well, Julius Caesar got rid of the old lunar Christian calendar and he called it the Julian calendar. And then he thought, there's a difference, a problem here. So he started adding days. That's why you have leap year or taking it days off. And sometimes you're not even born if you're born on the 28th of, 29th of February, right? That's it. Your days are gone. Something like that. In the 17th century, there was a pope called Pope Gregory. And he thought, you know what? I want this in my name. So he established the Gregorian calendar. That's what you call Gregorian calendar, right? But you and I, to be able to get the benefit of Allah's creation are to adopt the lunar calendar. Now, it doesn't matter if one Maraj, Marja says that it's on the horizon, you know, you have to see the moon on the horizon, I'm not going to go into moon sighting, it doesn't matter. We're still following that cycle. Your salah and my salah is based on the alternation of the sun, is it not? It's how the sun sets, how the sun rises. Our calendar is based on the phases of the moon. When the first of the month comes up, there is a new beginning. And every, Google it, every scientist will tell you that the moon has an effect on your system. Go and, go and live near the water or go on a holiday near the water and you will see the effect of the moon on the tides. Your and my body is, a, a, a lot of the body's um, constitution is water, is it not? Therefore it has an effect. When the prophet said, you don't want to fall ill? You want to have sehat? Fast on the 13th, 14th, 15th of every Month when the moon is at the top. Why did he tell you and me that? There are so many things he's told us that's based on that. Now let's look at our calendar. I'm just going to go very, very quickly through it, okay? Uh, Muharram, what do you think of? Ashura. Safar, what do you think of? Arbaeen. Rabiul Awal, what do you think of? Oh, that's good. You think of Miladun? Nabi. Okay, Rabiul Akhir. Everybody's quiet. 11th Imam, absolutely beautiful. Jamadul Awal, what do you think of? Sayyidah Zainab. Jamadul Akhar, Sayyidah Fatima. See, you're getting there. Can you see how it reignites us? Rajab, oh my goodness. Ma'raj, Imam Ali, so much. Imam Bakir, isn't it beautiful? Shaban. Do you remember as a child the three Kushalis? I know there's children here about me, my goodness. Those three people were green and white and red. Isn't that right? And it, you just looked forward to it because my grandmother gave us three new coins, right? Three kushalis. Then you have Laylatul Bara'a and the Wiladat of Imam Zamana, Ajjalallahu Faraj. And my goodness, Ramadan. That's a completely new ball game altogether. Laylatul Qadr. Shawal Eid. First of Shawal, you're looking for the moon. Oh, okay. I am. Okay. So, Dhul Qa'ta. Imam Rida. Isn't it amazing? And Dhul Hijjah. All the Eids. Do we not have? Well, Definitely not fitr, but you have hajj, you have ghadir, you have mubahil. I, that is Q calendar. And that is a sign that shows you and me the enthusiasm we have. As a child, the Eid that came every week was Friday, Jumu'ah. It was one of the most phenomenal days. We waited for Jumu'ah. And my grandmother made sure that it was the most special day of the week. Now I'm going to tell you something about Jumu'ah because that's what we have today. Okay, the reminders, it's really good. First of all, I remember my father used to tell me, he used to say, there is a time in Jumu'ah, one moment, when du'as are answered. So don't stop doing du'a. And we'd say, well, how, how do I know which time that is? He said, you'll know. I used to wait, you know, even not try and sleep. And remember, oh, by the way, the night is first, then the day. That's why you say, Jumirat. So Jumu'ah starts at Maghrib of Thursday till Maghrib on Friday. Okay, you got that. We've got so many places we've lost. Now these are ahadith, and I'm going to go over each one. In the 24 hours of Friday, there are 600,000 opportunities to get freedom from the fire. Okay, I've calculated it. Once every four seconds. Can you imagine? Every four seconds, astaghfirullah rabbi wa just get me away from that fire. Don't I ever see it, right? It's, it's amazing. Time for dua. Yaqub. What does he say in Quran? Sofa astaghfirullah rabbi. I will seek forgiveness for you. He's telling his sons. 
I will. Sawfa is future. Those of you who know Arabic know it's future. What was he waiting for? Mufassirin tells us he was waiting for Friday. Because Friday it's a blue cross sale. You know, it's like that pixie dust, that rahma pouring from the heavens. You just need to take it. These days you go online for sales. But I remember a time when the sales used to be there and people used to queue up at 4 o'clock in the morning, in particular in Watford in Next. Don't look at me because I saw some of you there and I was there too, okay? So you queued up for that sale in Next and then you saw namaz time and you said, can you keep my place so I can go and pray? Okay, yeah, okay, but you keep mine too. And it was amazing. That's like what Friday is all about. Blue Cross sale. Don't forget, just remembering lots. We're going to do Surah al if we've got time as well. Okay? And look at this, what the Prophet said. If for 24 hours on a Friday, you keep away from sins, all your past sins are forgiven. Oh, come on, 24 hours. Can you imagine? Everything is forgiven. It's the best day to do Ibadah together. We're actually together. And it's the best day to do ibadah together. And that is why Salatul Jumu'ah is only mentioned in Suratul Jumu'ah. Fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Run. And we'll talk about it when you do the ayah. Wadharul bay. It doesn't say leave business. Bay is not business. Bay is a sale. It's a deal. That means you're just about to strike a deal and the time of salah. Just drop it. It's better for you, he says. Anyway, we'll talk about it when we get there. Read as many salawats as possible. You know, we tell our children, the little ones, and those are the ones I absolutely adore. I would rather be in that tent than here. Sorry, I love you lots, but I love those children so much. So we tell the children on Friday, we say, the angels take gold and silver pens, and this is from a hadith, huh? And every time you read a salawat, they write it down. And because Allah is so Rahman, he writes this salawat right up to the night of Saturday, till tomorrow night. So in workshop, we encourage them, read loads of salawat, because Saturday is written as well. Oh, come on, look a bit enthusiastic. What's wrong with you? Okay, tasbihat arba, really important. From Fajr to um, Zohar today. No, no, I've got it wrong. Okay, from Zohar, from Fajr to Zohar, yeah. As much idol kursi as possible. You know, I used to go to my home, Mulaska. Sadika, you around? So she, got, she, she wants to put stuff in my letterbox. I get them anyway. So Fajr to Zohar, I went up to him and I said, what I don't understand about you, he said, how do you remember everything? You know, he'd look at a person and he'd know their name, dates, and he sat on this member and he didn't have to look at a book. He just knew it all. So how do you do that? He said, simple. Recite Aital Kursi on a Friday from Fajr to Zohar and recites Rutul A'la. So I'm letting you into what he taught me, and it works. Now, ghusl. Ghusl may not be wajib, the ghusl of Jumu'ah. But the Prophet tells Imam Ali, Ya Ali, if you don't have, if you have just enough money to buy water, and you don't have money to buy food and water, don't buy food and water. Buy water for ghusl. Must be important. And then I tell the kids, whenever you do ghusl, in Allah yuhibbut tawabin wa yuhibbul, and I say, if you don't know that, just say two, 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 two. Because Allah knows, no? Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 222. Come on, you can't forget that. So I tell them, if you even forget anything else, you know, while you're having a shower, it gets a bit misty, right on there. Two, 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 two. That's it. You've done it. In Allah, you have tawabin, wa you have You know, you might think this is, well... What does it mean? You are slowly bringing spirituality into your child. You're teaching them Quran. It's phenomenal. Sadaka. A sadaka on Friday has far more value than sadaka on any other day. And it doesn't matter who comes to you. They ask. If they don't ask, give. And please, it doesn't mean put money in that in a box at home. Bring it here. Masmalu. Give it to her, okay? Let her take the responsibility. But it's always better to make sure sadaqah reaches somewhere. Make sure you give it to somewhere where it gets to. Cut your nails. You know, we say, oh, really? Cut my nails on a Friday? The Prophet said that it prevents so many calamities, health calamities. Just cutting your nails. Gifts. Give your family gifts on a Friday. Buy them a present. Fool ni to fool ni. Bankri. Something small. It's amazing. I come here every, um, every day, and there's a ma, she hasn't come today. But she gives me sweets. My goodness, I look forward to those sweets. One sweet, can you not buy for your friend? Okay, sugar is not good for you. 
I said in one of my goals I wasn't going to have sugar on that day. And somebody came home, it was Tasveer actually, she was phenomenal. She knocked on the door in the evening and she said, I'm helping you with your goal. And she brought me a cake made with molasses. God, I've never appreciated cake ever, it's beautiful. So gifts, give your neighbors gifts, give your family gifts, it's amazing. Acquire knowledge, look what the prophet says. Woe to the person who doesn't set time aside on a Friday to seek knowledge. That's Friday. Remember your marhumin. You know, the prophet was sitting in the mosque on Friday one day, it was Fajr. And when the people came for Salah, he was crying. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, what's the matter? Have you got news? But you can't have news. Because at that time, all the cities had a wall around them. So you couldn't just come in. People would know if a messenger came in. And he said, your marhumin have made me cry. And they said, how so? He said, they came to me and said, they've forgotten me already. They didn't remember me. That is why on Jumerat, or the night of Friday, we remember our marhumin. Teach your children, irham turham. You remember your marhumin, they will remember you and you'll perpetuate, it'll become a meme, something to remember. Eat a pomegranate. Look, the season's coming in now. It increases noor inside your heart. And throughout the year, if you can't get pomegranate, get some juice, makes, makes an amazing difference. Now what I wait for on Friday is Friday Fajr. I know you'll have to wait for next Friday. Straight after Fajr, go into Sajda. You got that? Ten times Surah al Kafirun and ask for your hajat. It changes the impossible into the possible. I repeat again. After Salatul Fajr, go into Sajda, ten times Surah al Kafirun and ask for your hajat. There are so many amals. I can't even I don't even know which ones to take and which one not to. For the Takibat of Suratul Fajr, you will recite Surah al Rahman, inshallah. And for Salatul Fajr, you may want to recite Surah Al Jumu'ah in the first rakat and Surah Al Ikhlas in the second rakat. Now, Surah Al Jumu'ah is only 11 ayat, and we'll look at it. Really need to understand it, because otherwise it doesn't work. Quran is to be understood. Quran is not about pare and pare and pare. It's a guidance that takes you and me to our full potential. And reading Surah Al Jumu'ah will understand why it says that. Finally, after Surah Salatul Asr. So you've prayed Jumu'ah, and we'll talk about it. After that, you have Salatul Asr. 70 times istighfar, and you are forgiven for the week. And these are the, this is what the Prophet said. It's not something just we take generally, something we need to understand. And finally, this particular day is associated with Imam Mahdi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil faraj. And we remember him. Take out sadaqah for his safety in his name. Talk to him. Don't wait till the 15th of Shaban to write an Ariza. Oh, where did that come from? You know, on the 15th of Shaban, everybody writes an Ariza. Okay. Right, when you're writing something, you're actually talking to him. If you can talk to him, fair enough. But if you want to put it down on paper, and I know they'll get angry at me, but in the car park, there's a post box. Did you know that? Oh, you didn't know that, did you? This place has the cleanest water in Harrow. When many, many years ago, there was, children were dying because the water was polluted. They used to come here. And in the car park, in the main car park over there, there is a square. It is like, a, um, I don't know, one of those things, that, a, like a drain cover. It's not a drain cover. It's a well cover. And that's where, when they take your reasons, they put them in. Now, they won't open it for you, but there's a tiny little hole, like enough to put a pay piece of paper in. Don't all go at once, okay? <laughs> I'll get into trouble. But you could fold a piece of paper in, write a letter, and put it in. Now, I'm talk before I go into Surah Al-Jumah, I'll tell you about this young lady at workshop. I've spoken about her before. I repeat again. I can actually see her today, and I've taken her permission. She came to us one day. She was barely seven then, or five, not even seven. She was probably five or six. And she said, no, oh, I want an Ariza. And we said, OK. We gave her an Ariza. And we said, is everything OK? Because when a five-year-old asks you for an Ariza outside 15th of Shaban, there is something. And she said, my Baba is really ill. My Baba is in hospital. So we said, we'll all write, and we'll pray for him as well. A week later, she comes back. She says, I want another Ariza. And we thought, oh my goodness. And we said, is everything all right? She said, yeah, Baba's well. Now I want to say thank you. 
Okay. So this is what an Ariza is all about. This is what it is to talk to Imam Zaman Ajalallahu Faraj. You don't have to write. Talk to him. Sit there. Talk to him. He's there. He's alive. He's with us. And Friday is a day to do this better. But today we will look at Surah al -Jumu'ah. I really hope we have time to finish this. So Surah al -Jumu'ah, first thing you got to know, 11 ayat, it's a Madani Surah. Okay? 11 ayat, not much at all. The first thing we need to know is focus. What is the focus of Surah al -Jumu'ah? Number one. It's talking about the mission of the Prophet. How did he cause a paradigm shift in 23 years? How did he change a whole bunch of people? Surah Al-Jamaah tells me. The second thing it tells me is that this regular meeting, this regular weekly meeting of Salat Al-Jamaah is a strategic part of his mission. It is important to meet regularly. And for us, Sayyidah Zainab and Imam Zainul Abidin al-Islam made it so much easier. Because they ensured we got together for Majlis eh? Hussein. The Jama'ah makes it easier because on Laylatul Jama'ah they arranged a Majlis. And how would it be wonderful if everybody came on, on Laylatul Jama'ah? Anyway, so now you know that is the main concept of Surat al Jama'ah. Jama'ah means to gather, Jama'ah is a gathering, is it not? So Jama'ah means to gather. So divide it into five sections. You've got five fingers, you can't forget, no? I was trying to find a mnemonic to make it easy for you, okay? So P, M, are you good with this? You're looking at me like something's gone wrong. P, M, D, D, J. Can you remember that? I'll find a mnemonic and I'll make it easy for you. P, M, D, D, J. The moment you think Jumu'ah, you think P, M, D, D, J. I have some funky mnemonics, so I'm not going to say them from the member, okay? So P, M, D, D, J. The first section is Ayah 1. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi al-malik al-quddus al-aziz al-hakim. This is part of the musabbihat. There are seven surahs of the Quran. It's sur, by the way. One surah, so many sur. Now I'm going to mention it today because the first time I mentioned sur, you all wrote to everybody and said she's saying sur on the mimbar. Because in Gujarati, sur is something else. In English, it is plural of surah. So surah and suar. Seven suar are musabbihat. They start with sabbaha or yusabbihu. And sabbaha comes from the Arabic word sabaha, which means to swim or to float. You can only swim or float when there's perfect balance. So I'll, I'll paraphrase this. You, do, you know, the English translation says, glory be to Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. When you say subhanallah, you are declaring Allah's perfection. That's why it said P. Ayah 1 is P. And it's the only ayah in the Quran that has four asma'ul husna. Every other ayah you will see has two. And it's not, we don't have time, otherwise we'll go into why. But there's four. Al-Malikul Quddusil Azizil Hakim. Malik, king. Quddus, flawless. Aziz, he has all authority. Hakim, wise. So when you read through the Jumu'ah, first section, you look at your thumb and you think P, perfection. I declare his perfection. Everywhere I look, I can find perfection. So when I look at somebody, I'm trying to find the best in them. When I look at myself, I have the self-confidence of knowing that I look for the best in myself. That's perfection. Next section. This is section two. I said M, didn't I? That's ayah two to four. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِ مَا يَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ وَيُعَلِّهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَال Hikmah, oh my goodness, four. Mission of the Prophet. The whole surah revolves on the second ayah. It is he who sent a messenger upon them in the Ummiyin. Ummiyin are the people of Makkah, right? Because it was the mother of all towns. It was a town that was known as Ummi. So Ummiyin, he sent these Prophet to them to do four things. Yatlu alayhim ayati wa yuzakihim wa yu'allimu al-kitabu wal hikwal Hikmah, four things. And how many Asma'ul Husna did we have? Four. Match it. Malik, and he relates the Malik signs. Who was the second one? Kudus. Wa yuzakihim. He purifies them. The third one was Aziz. Aziz is one with all authority. You alimum al kitab, he teaches the law. Wal hikmah, wisdom. He teaches them how to, to be wise, which means walk the talk. It actually corresponds. Okay, ayah three. Are you good with me? You're with me. Okay. Wa akharina minhum lamma yalhaqo bihim wa huwa al-azizul hakim. It is not only for the people of Makkah. 
It's all those who will join later, every nation, every age. And he put his hand on Salman and he said, Oh Salman, even if this message was in the pleads, the, the furthest star possible, they would get this message. Quran is about understanding that. So I'm thinking of my middle finger and I'm thinking M. This is Muhammad. That is his paradigm shift. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَيْ يَشَى وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ This is the fadl of Allah. Fadl is not a ni'mah. Ni'mah is a blessing. Fadl is extra. This is a fadl he gives. It's available to everyone. It's up to you whether you take it or you don't take it. The Quran and the Masumin are fadl. The Quran is, is with us in all our homes. Every single person has a Quran. But whether I pick it up, whether I only read it at marriages, deaths, Ramadan, it's up to me. So, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَيْ يَشَاءُ اللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ Now section three. So we looked at P, M, and what did I say? D. Every time you think of the middle finger, you think donkey. Yeah, Quran talks about donkey. He says, and he's not saying, now please stay with me. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ التَّوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْهِمَارِ Himar is a donkey. Those who are given the book. And remember, it's only given an example of past nations who are given the Torah. But they did not carry it. That means they didn't use it as a book of reflection. They didn't use it as a book that took them to their full potential. They just parade and parade and parade. Right? That's all they did. He says, in the Arabic language means that the donkey is better than those people. They were given a book. My children love Wagamama. Do you like Wagamama? <laughs> so you buy a... So somebody for a birthday present gave a Wagamama cookery book. Now if that cookery book lies on the shelf, I put it in the kitchen, it looks really pretty. But if you open it, there's no marks on it, no thumbprints on it, no flour, no oil. That's what cookery books are supposed to look like, right? It means it hasn't been used. And that's exactly what he's saying. He says... It's just like that donkey with papers on his back. These are people who, who just ignore the truth. They cover it up. And it's telling us, you and I, what do you and I do with the Quran? Or you who are, who, Hadu is Hidayah, but it refers to those who are followed Prophet Musa. So it says, hadu in zaantum annakum awliyaulillahi min dunin nas fatamanna ul mauta in kuntum sadikin. If you think you are so special and that you are the best in the world and you are the chosen people, then invoke death if you are truthful. What are you doing here if all your investments are in the hereafter? Why are you here? And Allah says, Wala tatamanna nahu abadam bima kaddamat. They will never invoke death. Now it's talking to you and me as well. If I know, if I don't worry about accountability, what it's trying to tell me is if I do not read the Quran, I will think I am not accountable. I will think, you know what, I'll come to Muharram Majlis, I'll cry a bit, Bas, I'll go to Jannah, Imam Hussein will take me to Jannah. He didn't say, definitely, by the way, if you cry for Hussein, if you respond to injustice with justice, if you have compassion, 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 if you forgive like Hussein did, you will go to Jannah. But there might be a little detour of Jannah, right? Which you don't want to do. So that's basically what he's saying. Right, then we go into the next section. What did I say? P, M, D, oh, another D, death. So ayah number eight is death. And you know how you remember that is death? Two circles in eight, right? A circle of dunya and a circle of akhra. Oh, doing bits and pieces. So what does it say? The death that you run away from. And you know, laqa is bound to meet you. It's not going to go anywhere. The death that you run away from, it'll definitely meet you. And what will it do? What, do you, what happens when I die? You will be returned to the one who knows the hidden the unseen and the seen, and he will tell you about your life. So basically, that finger, that finger here, when I look at it, it's a summary of my life's work. 
and the inevitability of death. Nobody is protected from death. And finally, the last section, which was five. I said something. What letter did I say? J. So P M D D J. Every time you read Surah Al Jama'a, and maybe I'll, I'll post a mnemonic somewhere on the website and you can pick it up later. So now the last one is about Salat Al Jama'a. And Allah mentions it so well. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawmil jumu'ah. The moment you are called for Salat Al Jama'a, what are you supposed to do? You know what sa'i is? Sa'i is to run. Run to the remembrance of Allah. Leave your sails. That is better for you if only you knew. Drop everything. Absolutely everything. There were ulama in the past who would say, if you went shopping at the time of Jumu'ah, that sail was batil. Not today. That's what they used to say. Okay. Now what happens when the salah is finished? fil ard, spread out in the earth. min fadlillah. Find the favors of Allah. Go and find something. Go and do something right. And remember Allah a lot. Do charity. Do something right. Seek knowledge. That's what Fridays are supposed to be used for. And finally, wa ida ilayha. When they see merchandise, what happens? Or they see Lahawi's entertainment. In fadlu ilayha. Please remember this word. In fadlu is when a glass shatters. When a glass shatters, it's very difficult to put it back in again. So he says, when they see business and this historical prophets praying in Medina, there's the sound of a caravan outside and it's like an ice cream van. It makes a noise. And when he turns back, there's only 12 people. Everybody's gone. Right? And they shattered the essence of the, of the salah. In fadlu ilayha. They shattered it. And he says, وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمَ And they left you standing. قُلْ مَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهُ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ رَازِكِينَ What is with Allah is better than entertainment and business. Today we don't have to go away. We should need our phones with us. In salah, take your phone. When it rings, oh, my goodness, Facebook. Oh, this is a deal. i got to finish it. Nobody needs to know. You just have to click your fingers and on there. At that time, it was this. So Jumu'ah, let's try and protect it. I'm not going to be able to do Gujarati today because I've only got five minutes left and we need to go on to um, Masaib. So can I please have a salawat? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil farajum. There is far more to Jumu'ah than what I talk about. Please read about it. It's just going over the top. So today we commemorate an amazing personality. His name was Qasim, son of Hassan, barely 12 years old. You know, Imam Hassan had four sons, Abu Bakr, Abdullah, Hassan and Muthanna, and Qasim. Now in the past, we used to confuse Hassan and Muthanna with Qasim. Let me tell you how. When I was a child, I remember that on the day of Shah Qasim, they would bring henna out, mendi out. I don't know whether you remember that or not. I hope you don't because it wasn't right. So what happened was Hassan Muthanna, Hassan Muthanna means the second Hassan. He was married to Fatima's daughter of Imam Hussein. They were married in Medina and both of them came to Karbala. Okay? Hassan Muthanna was injured in the battle of Ashura. On the battle of Karbala, he was injured and they actually pronounced him dead. So he was lying there, they thought he was dead. He opened his eyes on the 11th of Muharram. So he opened his eyes and said, oh my God, he's alive. But there was somebody called Asma, Asma is a man. He was related to Kola, who was the mother of Hassan Muthanna. And he said, you will not touch this man, you will not kill him. He was protecting him. So he took him to Kufa, he recovered, he got better, and from him comes a family of Tabatabai. You've heard of Tabatabai, haven't you? That comes from Hassan e Muthanna and Fatima. But because we confused Hassan e Muthanna with Qasim, we thought that because Qasim died, Fatima was left as a widow. History happened a long time ago. People get confused. We all get confused with dates and recitations and when something is converted from Arabic to Urdu to Gujarati, it gets 
there's Kachumbar. Okay, so we've got to just understand where this is. Now, just look at um, Qasim, amazing personality. So, on the night of Ashura, Imam Hussein al Islam is reading the list of all the martyrs. There's a list, he's reading them. And Qasim comes up and says, What about me? My name is not on there. My son, he says, You are the embodiment of my brother. You're so young. Anyway, what do you feel about death? And his words are ingrained. Death to me in the way of Allah is sweeter than honey. And for us too, a sentence, a word is what your children will hold on to. And we remember that about Qasim. So the next day his mom Ramla says, go, go get permission. He goes to Imam Hussain he says, no. When I look at you, I see Hassan. You're too young. It's okay. He comes out. He sits outside a tent, and history tells us that he's playing with the, with the string of the tent. He doesn't know what to do. He goes to his mom, mom says, go to uncle, ask for permission. Goes to uncle, uncle says, go back to mom, you're not doing this. He doesn't want to go anywhere. And then his mom comes and says, what are you doing here? I told you to get permission. He says he's refusing. So mom says, look what you've got around your neck. The Zakarin tell us that he had it around his neck. Allahu ya alam. Around his neck was a letter. He takes that letter and he gives it to his uncle. And there is a letter from Imam Hassan. He says, Hussein, I will not be there on the day when you will need me most. Please accept my son as a representative of me. And you can imagine Imam Hussain al-Islam. He's, um, he's just sent on and Muhammad. And he's looking at this child and he's thinking, I'm going to go through this again. But now it's like I'm dressing my brother up. He puts a armor on Qasim, gives him a sword, and he takes him to the battlefield, thinking he's taking him to the lion's den. As he comes out, there is a man called Azra Kashami. Azra Kashami has four sons, and he says, Ah, this is easy. It's a child. I'm going to send my sons, and they will finish this child. And there's a one to one combat. And Qasim kills all of them. Azraq is absolutely furious. He says, now, now I will go. But he too, he doesn't get over. He, Qasim kills him too. And then there's Amr bin Sa'ad Azdi. He's talking to Humayd ibn Muslim, who's a journalist. He tells Humayd ibn Muslim, I will attack this child. Humayd says, what has this child done to you? He said, he is the light of Hussein's eye. I can see it. He's surrounded. Azdi, as I will call him, lifts his sword and he hits the child. The child puts his arm around the horse. In the confusion, the horse runs to the enemy's side. Imam swoops down to the battlefield like an eagle. And he comes to Azdi and he raises his sword, which hits Azdi, who screams. Now you can imagine the scenario. There are horses running from one side to the other. Nobody knows what's happening because the earth of Karbala is in the air. It is confusing. When the dust settles, Imam sees a child. The child has been trampled so badly, but Imam can see that his toes are scratching the ground. And he's saying, Ya me, oh my uncle, help me. And Imam says, you called me and I came, but I cannot help you. Imam carries him and he puts him near Akbar. He takes some earth, he puts them onto his hair and he says, Ya Allah, you have deprived me of two sons. I don't have these sons now. Ya Rabbal Alameen. But Hussein says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Sayalamun alladheena dalamu ayyamun kalibiyan kalibun. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the barakah of Friday. For us to be able to recite through the Jumu'ah, and I'm hoping you will memorize it by next Friday, to be able to memorize it, to be implemented in our lives, so that we too can have a paradigm shift. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shafa to all those who are ill, especially those that I've talked about who are undergoing um, surgery today. Ya Allah, bihaqqi qasim. 
We pray to you for the najat of those who are suffering in the world. For the kabbal minna inna kentas sami'u alayhi.